All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the screen on this seventh generation Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. So first you're going to need a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove all the screws from the bottom. Um, if you're having a power issue and your, your laptop isn't turning on, there's a little reset button here that you can press with a small um, uh, paper clip that you just bend out or you can use a needle or something or a SIM card removal tool. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and open up this panel. So just undo the screws. I believe on this model, the screws are gonna stay in place on the back cover. So just undo them all, okay. Three along the top, and then we got two along the sides here. Okay. All right, once you get all these screws out, we should be able to go from the back here and pull the cover up. And yes, it comes out pretty easily. There we go. All right, we'll set the cover aside. So the main reason for me opening this is to disconnect the battery. So what I'm going to do, get underneath here and you'll see the battery connector here. Let me zoom in. <clears throat> all right, so we're going to disconnect the battery. This one, if I remember correctly, has a weird sliding mechanism that you also have to end up pulling it up. Let's see which way does it go. Okay, so what you gotta do is on the front here, I don't know if you can see, but there's the little gap. So I just use my fingernail in there. You can use a pry tool, but you pull up on this, okay? Let's see here. It doesn't wanna come up. All right, I don't know why this one doesn't wanna come up. It might be, is it that one? Or do we have to pull from the back? Let's see here. This one, slide it forward, nope. Hmm, doesn't want to come up. All right, let's try some more. There we go. Okay, so yes, you pry up from the front here. And once you get that connector up, you push this whole connector this direction, all right, to slide it out. And then you can get this connector out. So when you put it in, of course, you have to pull it slightly up, drop it in there, and then you can slide it back down and then push this into place. But I'm going to leave this disconnected for now. We'll put this plastic under there to prevent it from accidentally reconnecting. All right, let's zoom out. Oops, what is that? I'm getting a notification. Let me swipe that away. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's zoom back out. All right, once you disconnect the battery, it's always a good idea. Open up the screen and then press and hold the power button on the side here. Okay. So press and hold that power button here, 10 to 15 seconds. This will drain any power from the board so that there's a lot less risk of damaging anything when working with the screen. Okay, so we're just gonna keep holding this down about 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, still holding it. All right, there we go. Um, I'm gonna show underneath here. So it looks like there's two M.2 SSD slots. Uh, at least I think that's also an M.2 SSD slot. Let's see here. This might just be a network card slot. So this looks a little bit different. They didn't label this, so I'm not 100% sure. So it looks like this person must have upgraded it because usually they don't use this silicon power brand SSD, but this is a PCIe NVMe SSD. Um, this might be for a network card. I'm not sure. I'm looking in here. I don't see where the wireless card is. You got the keyboard connector here, keyboard backlight connector here. This is kind of a longer one, so I don't think it's for a wireless card. Um, it might also be for another M.2 SSD. I don't know. They didn't label it. This connector looks about the same length. So I'm guessing this is another M.2 SSD, but it's the shorter type. All right, oh, here, the wireless card is integrated into the board, so you can't even remove it. It's part of the motherboard. You can pop up the little wireless antennas. Then you got two connectors here. Um, I don't know if this is touchscreen. I don't think it is, but um, one is for the LCD or the, the LCD screen, or they call them the um, LVDS connector or cable. All right, you got this connector here. It looks like for a speaker. So this is for the speaker and the cable runs underneath to this speaker as well. Then you got two more speakers here and it looks like this cable runs along here and the speaker connects here. Um, and then you got this twisted red and black cable. That's very likely for a CMOS or BIOS battery, but I don't wanna pop everything out because the main goal of this is to repair the, um, the motherboard here. Okay. 
I mean not the motherboard, sorry, replace the screen. Um, this board is separate from the rest, so I'm assuming that this connector is for this USB board. Sorry I'm not taking everything out, but just from looking at it, that's what I see. The CPU is soldered to the board. Then you also got this, this is the button that I was talking about that you can actually push with a pin through the bottom cover. You got the fan connector here, of course. And yeah, they also got another connector here. I'm not sure what it's for. Um, so I don't know. This model has a whole bunch of like extra connectors that aren't being used. <clears throat> and then they have one of these, I think this is like a case intrusion thing. So this little thing can get pushed down when the case is on top. And that's, I believe that's supposed to tell it that the cover is on or not. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and try and remove the screen. Um, if you're wondering, these golden things here, these are the wireless Wi-Fi antennas. Okay, let's go ahead and try and remove the screen. So now that we got the battery disconnected and the power pressed, um, we're going to go ahead and try and pop this out. There's most likely a strong adhesive around this whole frame. So keep that in mind when pulling this up, you're very likely going to damage the screen. So if your screen is still somewhat usable, you might not want to attempt this. Okay, so I'm just pulling up from the center and it's lifting up this whole thing. So the screen's not even separating. Okay, so you kind of want to be careful here. I'm just going slowly and it's slowly peeling up the adhesive. I don't know if you can even see it in there, but... Yeah, there's an adhesive in there. Okay, so we're slowly going to peel this up so that the adhesive can release. Okay, usually I don't use heat on these because this is plastic here and I don't want to risk melting it. Um, and since the screen's already broken, we're just going to be applying a lot of upward pressure to pull this bezel out. Hopefully I have enough recording memory left on my phone to do this because I forgot to empty the trash on it. All right, so I'm just slowly pulling on this, and there we go. We got part of it up. We're going to slowly just keep peeling this up. All right, now that I got part of the edge out, I'm using the edge and pulling it slightly as well. Okay. Let's see if I can see what it looks like in here so I can get a better idea of what I need to do to peel it out. So it is just a very strong adhesive all along the entire thing. So we are going to continue peeling this out. Okay. And this stuff is really difficult. So it is just a strong adhesive. So you just keep peeling it. All right. Once you get along here, it's a lot easier. You kind of want to try and keep the bezel as flat as possible. You don't want to crease it or uh, bend it too much because when you go to push it back down, it's going to keep those bends in it and creases and then it might not sit flat so I'm trying to just pull it like this and the adhesive under here is actually pretty gooey as you can see so we're gonna see I don't know how I'm gonna stick this back on we'll find out all right so right now I'm just opening it or removing this bezel to check the screen model number okay all right so hopefully I'll be able to put it back together. Be careful not to touch the lens here. You don't want to get fingerprints and stuff all over it. All right. Oh man, it's stuck right there really strong. Okay, I don't know why this spot here is stuck so hard in there. But it's holding really strong. Okay, there we go. Oh, I see. The adhesive is holding down to this piece. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and keep peeling this. I might have to take the screen out, actually. We'll see. So let's go ahead and peel this adhesive away. It seems to be one of those stretch type adhesives. So this kind of adhesive, if you kind of pull on it, it helps release from the device. So here you can see if I kind of stretch it, it's kind of releasing better. Okay, let's remove that. All right, hopefully everything in here is okay. There's this metal plate there. I'm gonna go ahead and peel out this adhesive stuff. So they put a very thin layer of adhesive along the edge of the screen, and then they put another thin layer along the top here. Okay, 
So I might have to actually remove the screen. We'll see. All right, so let's continue peeling this up. Wow, this bezel holds on really strong. Okay. I'll try and let the adhesive stay down there while I kind of just peel this up. Okay. And I'm trying to pull it away towards myself as I peel it. So that way the entire thing comes out. I'm going to peel off this excess adhesive. Um, you probably will want to clean off the adhesive and then put some new adhesive. All right, when you do this. But there we go. It is coming out. Okay, the bottom part actually is coming out pretty easily. All right, I'm holding down the screen as I slowly pull the bezel away. And we're almost there. So these corners are the tough part. There we go. Because they got all the adhesive on the screw hinge area here. Alright, so we got the bezel out. Here you can see they put adhesive like that and like this and then thicker pieces here. Again, you're probably going to want to undo all this adhesive and then add some new adhesive to it. Okay, so I'll peel that off later. I mean, you get the idea. Just peel it all off and then add some new ones. Alright. Whatever adhesive they use, it's super thin. I don't know. I don't have adhesive that's this thin. I'll just use my acrylic adhesive later. All right, so we'll set this aside. Okay, so the screen, let's see here. Do they have pull tabs on this one? I see bumpers, so I don't see any pull tabs. It looks like the screen hopefully will just come out. So we got that. I'm going to tilt it forward and kind of like just wiggle this and it looks like the screen is just coming out. So we're going to pull this away. All right. There are little foam pads. This thing is kind of stuck to those for some reason. Actually, I don't think it's stuck to the foam pad. I think that's some of the adhesive that was left over. Yep. Oh, actually there's, there's a foam pad stuck here. It's like a double stick foam pad. So I'm going to have to try and pull those away. I don't know why there's only on the left side. So I'm just rubbing my fingernail along that foam pad to release it. There we go. So now we got the screen out. The screen um, cable, there isn't much slack here. So it's really difficult to do this. I'm not sure about um, putting the screen back. We'll see. It looks like, yeah, there's not much slack here. Actually, okay. We can actually pull the screen cable up slightly. So you want to be careful. But we can actually pull this cable up and out of this area a little bit. And now we can tilt it forward. All right. So now we're going to remove this piece here. Let me see. I'm going to need my... Do I have that thing here still or did I move it? Okay, give me a second. I'm going to get my plastic razor blade. Oh, here it is. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and try and scrape underneath this piece. All right, just to get underneath that adhesive strip. And then we're going to peel this up. Hmm, this is kind of tough to remove. So I'm going to use the razor blade to help while I'm pulling this. I'm just sliding the razor blade underneath to separate the adhesive from the screen. Okay just like this and there we go so now we cut the adhesive away all right let me zoom in actually sorry about that all right so now we're going to disconnect the cable so it has a little flip latch just flip that up just like this hopefully it's clear enough there we go once you flip that up just grab the metal latch and then using your fingernails or the tips of your fingers at the bottom pull that latch out just like that Again, hopefully you remember to press and hold the power button and then drain the power. Um, but here we go. Here you can see they have this. I don't know why the foam sticky things are on this side, but this side has um, of the screen has permanent foam. All right. Anyways, I'm going to close this up. We're going to leave this and I'm going to order a screen. Basically, to put this back, you just put the adhesive back on and stick it all back into place. 
So there's not really much to show there. It's just using double stick adhesive. Let me zoom out actually. So right now I'm just peeling off the old adhesive. All right, I mean, you get the idea. I'm just gonna roll my finger over it to get it and then peel that off slowly. So I'm gonna do that off camera because you don't really need to see that. We're gonna close this for now. But here's the screen model number. I'm gonna transfer over the foam pads later. But there you go. For this one, it's NE140FHM-N61 version 8.0. So apparently they have different models for this. So um, you'll want to probably check yours because yours might be different. There are touchscreen models and non-touchscreen models. So keep that in mind. Um, but this is what mine is. And usually I'll just find these on eBay or something. Alright, so anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys. To put it back, just do everything in reverse, snap the cover back in, put the screws in. You do want to start with the um, bottom cover. Let me actually do that. So when you put this bottom cover back, you do want to start with it with this side in first. Alright, just like this. You want to get the bottom clips in. Okay, get it all lined up. You might have to kind of lift mess with how high you lift it up to get it to go in properly there we go and there we go and then just put all the screws back in but yeah that's pretty much it hopefully this video helped you guys if it did please like and subscribe share my channel with others so that they can also work on their devices and i'll see you in the all in the next one thanks bye